as the AI topic is getting hotter and hotter every day, you'd start to wonder, where is Africa in all this? Has Africa invented its own AI yet? Or are we still using AI made by Western countries? According to many people across the world, Africa is literally not on the map for artificial intelligence across the world. We are completely non-existent on the map. We have AI models being built everywhere by countries like US, Canada, UK, China. But where is Africa in all this? Is it just dark and nothing is happening here? With majority of African countries not even having satellites in orbit, can they really compete in the AI race? Before we get started with our list, check out this Nigerian humanoid AI robot called Jarvis. It's moving! It's moving! Go to this boy! Go moving! It's moving, sir! You know, you know, you stay safe, no, no! Should I stop? No, no, you're crazy, don't stop! Yeah, yeah, I know she's not a real AI, but for first AI, we have Fondamate. Fondamate is one of the studying AI models. The founders are Dakod and Tao. These two didn't have textbooks when they were back in school. But at least Dakod was able to download studying materials online on his computer. But as it happened, the problem wasn't limited to his school alone. Many students were going through the same thing where they didn't have textbooks um, in their school. So Dakod and Tao realized that most students don't have these books, but most of them have WhatsApp. Oh, how difficult are people to find? But with Fundamate, you can instantly get the past papers and the memo immediately, just yes. like that. Yeah. Just like that. Just like that, man. Yo! <laughs> past paper. <laughs> now I pass paper a corn. And the memo. And the memo. Damn. Now, would you recommend this to anyone in your class, Yo. any of your friends? Yo, 100%. 100%. I would. I would. I would. You would use I yourself would. to make sure you pass my trick, man. Yeah, yeah, from now on, I will, uh, I will use this. I know. Yo. Yo. When WhatsApp opened its API to the public, Fundamate was born. Using AI, Fundamate can send you studying resources based on your subjects. You just ask Fundamate your studying questions on WhatsApp. And it shoots out an answer. And when they launched their video demo, they had 40,000 users within weeks. Downloads grew across Africa, starting in South Africa, Nigeria, and then Kenya. And soon, users started popping up in Indonesia, Colombia, and even India. By the end of 2022, they had hit 1 million users with no signs of slowing down. Fast forward to today, Fundamate has over 3 million users worldwide. For next AI, we have Kainenevo Savant. Hey friend, um, how can I get to Dubai from Nigeria? What is the fastest way to do this? Ah, uh, nice one. Oh yeah, use Pigeon English, take answer me again. Okay, now, enough said, rude boy. Use a uh, Jamaican patois, they can answer me this one. When we're talking about any race in Africa, be it in AI race or any other technological race, there will always be that one country that will always be in the conversation, and that is Nigeria. Introducing Nigeria's own chatbots, Kainene was savant. I'm gonna say a line from the popular song and then you complete it and then I'll complete it on and on we go. Does that make sense? You ready? Mm. 
So can I get an encore? Do you want more? So what the hell are you waiting for? Who you know fresher than who will redo me that? It's similar to ChatGPT, of course, but it's an AI bot on Telegram. The AI was developed by Justin Ibarro, who is a professional web developer and data scientist at an international university of applied sciences in Germany. After struggling to balance his work and studies, he created an AI bot called Kenene Vosavant to help him with his academic work. He then purchased an AI model and trained it with textbooks for several weeks to create a personal training partner and a tutor to assist him in understanding specific factors in his academic work. He wanted to deposit women as intelligent peers with high IQ, so he made the chatbot female and named her after Maryland Vos Savant. Justin then started sharing his experience on Twitter, which quickly built public attention and many followers started asking for access to the AI chatbot. Fast forward to today, the AI chatbot has thousands of users on Telegram who rely on it for daily tasks and prompting for information. The AI chatbot was initially for personal use, but he retained it for general usage, allowing it to be further tailored to each individual use case. Kenelevo Savant has a user interface and experience that many prefer over other AI chatbots and it has been used to help with work and practical language together with many more. Now, the reason why most of these AI startups are based on WhatsApp API or Telegram is because to develop AI, you need a supercomputer to do it. But Africa doesn't have any supercomputers. And what I mean is big tech companies like NVIDIA don't have any focus on Africa, so they don't sell to Africa. So most of our talent who are interested in developing AI have to go to Western countries where they have these supercomputers. Some African talents try to buy these machines because they believe in African values. But you know what the government does? The government increases taxes on computers. Like the government is the one that is supposed to be buying these computers. But for them, it's not that at all. They should, like, they should make the computers free of tax, of course, if they want Africa to develop in terms of AI or in the AI race. But instead, the government taxes up to 20% of these machines. So basically, the governments are destroying the continent. For our next AI, we have Mobile GPT. It's a South African-made chat GPT. But it's not really like chat GPT because it's WhatsApp-based. So Mobile GPT is basically a personal AI assistant that sits on your mobile. In that, you don't have to download or install other apps on your phone or even to go to your browser in order to get AI services. You just take out your phone, open WhatsApp, and the AI chatbot is right there with you. When you first get started with this AI, you have three options. You can either just have a chat, 
having a chat will basically do the exact same thing that chat GPT does. The second thing you can do is to generate an AI image. But first of all, I would press two, all right, so that I get into the image section of the menu. You're selected to generate an image, describe the type of image that you want. You could say, hey, get a photorealistic image of a cat or whatever it is you could say in there, enter zero and all of that. So I'm going to put that in here and I want you to generate an image of a white chihuahua running on the road. It does take a bit of time, like I said to you, because obviously this is on the mobile, but it's not really that long. Hey, there's a white chihuahua running. And the third and most important aspect of this AI is that it can also generate documents i want to generate a document and it's going to ask you what type of document do i want to generate i'm going to say i want to generate a website a website blog a website blog um this is not website website blog um so okay it's working on it it's not really generating it yet because i haven't told it what the blog is about this is just the type of document um, that I want to generate. So once we've uh, we're done with that, then it's going to come back and it's going to say to me. So now that's a bit of this is a bit of a long uh, piece of instruction, but read this very carefully because this is so important. And the more information you give it, the better quality the document will be. We know this is like any other tool. Just so yeah, this is how this South African AI works. Do you think it will ever reach the level of ChatGPT? Let me know in the comment section below. And also, as you're continuing, please remember to subscribe and hit on the like button. Then we have Kudi AI. This is Kudi AI. It's a chatbot that is fully integrated with the banking and the payment system. The chatbot was made in Nigeria, and when you ask it to send airtime, it deducts money straight from your bank account. And to add to its security features, it also has a PIN. It saves the hassle of going through a long process when sending money. And the good thing about this AI is that you don't even have to type in numbers or bank accounts for the recipient, just their name, as long as they are saved on your phone. Kudi AI has over the years transformed so much that they even rebranded to Nomba. Nomba provides payment solutions, management tools, and banking services to over 300,000 businesses, helping them improve their processes and operate more efficiently. With a monthly transaction volume of $1 billion, Nomba holds a leading position in Africa's marketing for payment services in terms of gross transactional value, of course. And to think that they just started as an AI chatbot company, it's mind blowing. Then we have another AI from South Africa called Botale AI. With Africa being home to more than 2000 languages spoken across 54 countries. Botali AI has made a model that is focused on helping businesses overcome language barriers. So what they do exactly is to help businesses and organizations to engage with their customers in an African language they can understand and are used to. For example, it's an AI that translates languages for you, let's say from English to one of the many languages spoken in Africa. For example, maybe Swahili and Igbo. They do this with DSTV, where DSTV's customers on WhatsApp can interact with DSTV in African languages. So what we do at Botlali AI is we help businesses and 
organization to, to engage with their customers in languages their customers understand and trust. So we use AI to enable this. So we do this in um, African languages. So we've actually recently just gone live with uh, DSTV. So DSTV customers on WhatsApp can interact with DSTV in African languages, in Isizulu, Sesotho, Afrikaans. That's what we do at Botlali. And how it started was basically through a simple interaction with my grandmother, who yeah. speaks Tswana, like me, Kimotswana. And she's asking me to load prepaid airtime for her on her phone. But she's saying, in this, she's saying this in Setswana. The voucher's in English, her phone is in English, but she can't do it. Mm. So during uh, that interaction, that's when I realized, you know, there's a lot of people who struggle to um, use digital services or properly participate in the, in the formal digital economy because of language barriers. You cannot register a business online if you don't understand English. You can't do banking if you don't understand English. But with this AI, you can. So the project between Botale, Chinosis and MultiChoice is essentially to localize their WhatsApp channel and making it available in three more South African languages, Isizulu, Sesotho and Afrikaans. And we do this using AI-powered natural language processing. Now, at least you know Africa is not that behind when it comes to the AI race. But at the end of the day, Africa doesn't have the required hardware that is required to develop AI. That's why most of these AIs are based on WhatsApp and Telegram API, as I mentioned before. And keeping in mind that Africa also has the lowest internet connectivity in the world. I guess this is one of the many barriers that has kept Africa lagging behind. But I hope maybe one day we'll catch up. Anyway, in the meantime, you can always subscribe for more inventions and things made in Africa where we go through them in this channel. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.